Hello Soberinos and welcome to this week's Friday Fix. Today it's titled Living Life Awake 2 because I wanted to follow along the same theme um, as last week because I loved this little um, phrase of Emma's where she said living life sober is like living your life awake and I thought it would be really helpful to tell you a little bit about my experience with stopping drinking and what that phrase means to me. But I'm going to start by going back to the metaphor, which I really liked. After I'd shared it with you, I thought, I really like that metaphor. I'm going to do some more with that. And the metaphor was that when we're drinking, we are covering stuff over we are hiding it. And I imagined in my mind's eye, I saw a garden and I pictured plants underneath some sort of cover. And the cover was preventing the plants from growing and because there was, there was no light getting to them. Um, so they weren't able to properly grow. So some kind of cover over a load of plants in a garden. Now, some of these plants are beautiful. Some of these plants are really um, soul searchingly beautiful. Um, they're life giving plants. They're beautiful to look at and they require tending. Some of these plants are poisonous weeds. Some of them are really difficult to control. Um, some of them are actually harmful. Um, they might be quite thorny and they might cut you, um, if you if you try and touch them without a pair of heavy duty gardening gloves. So I've got this really clear image in my head of a kind of cover of some sort over a garden and that's covering up all the plants. Now, although the plants above the soil are unable to grow upwards because they're not getting any light. Beneath the soil, they are all growing roots. So the roots are still growing. Now, I don't know if that's actually scientifically possible or not. I have no idea. But because it's my imagination and my metaphor, I can do whatever I like. So, oh God, do you know what? I've just been distracted by thinking that I'm not recording this in the right frame. I don't want to be recording it square. I want to be recording it rectangle. Anyway, nothing I can do about it now. Um, so yeah, I've got this metaphor, cover plants, roots growing down into the earth, but because I don't want to have to deal with the thorns, because I don't want to have to deal with the poisonous plants, because I don't want to have to deal with having to go through and weed um, and weed them out and really tend the beautiful plants that I want to nurture. I'm just keeping it all covered over because this cover is the type of cover where it's either all got to come off or it's all got to stay on. You can't pick and choose which which bits of the cover um you you can't just pick up little bits of the cover and then it's it's one big cover that it either all comes off or it all goes on and it's much easier to deal with that garden if it's all covered over as soon as i take that cover off i'm then faced with a massive tangle that needs to be addressed i need to do some weeding i need to do some cutting i need to do some self protection to stop myself getting too hurt by the poisons, by the thorns. Um, I've also got a lot of backbreaking work to do because it might be that some of those weeds have underground, the roots have grown deeper and deeper and quicker because obviously it's the case with weeds that they're much stronger, they're much more robust, um, at least they seem to be, um, and they spread quicker. Um, so let's imagine that some of the weeds are the kinds of we some of the weeds in this garden are the kind of weeds that spread like wildfire. And under the soil, they have been slowly but surely taking over and really stifling 
some of the roots of the other beautiful plants that we actually want to nurture. So I take the cover off this garden and I'm faced with a real jungle that's going to require a lot of work. And that's the metaphor for me that works really, really well um, in terms of relating it to drinking and living our lives sober. And coming back to Emma's phrase about living life awake. When we're living life awake, we are confronted with the jungle. We are confronted with having to do the weeding, with having to do the backbreaking work, with having to sweat, with having to perhaps get cut, get hurt a little bit or a lot. Um, and so that's the metaphor that I wanted to share with you again, but to develop it just a couple of stages further um, in the hope that it might work for some of you as well. Now, it's all very well leaving the cover over this garden. In other words, we carry on drinking because it's covering over everything we don't want to have to deal with. We don't want to have to deal with those weeds. We don't want to have to do the work and we'd rather just hide it all. But in carrying on drinking, in keeping that cover over everything, those roots are getting deeper and the weeds are developing more of a stranglehold over the other plants. And it means that when we do eventually take that cover off, it's harder work than it would have been if we'd lifted the cover off sooner and if we'd done the weeding and the cutting back and the trimming. Um, I don't think there's an awful lot more I need to add to that. I hope that that, that kind of articulates what I'm trying to get across. Um, but I love that metaphor. I think it works so well. And the example I wanted to give you, the bit of my story that I wanted to share with you that relates to this is that while I was drinking, one of the weeds, just one because there were a few, one of the weeds that I was keeping covered because I didn't want to have to deal with it was anxiety. I used to experience really high levels of anxiety to the point that they were referred to as anxiety attacks or panic attacks. Um, I can't remember what the GP, what the doctor, did he, did he call it generalised anxiety disorder or something? I can't remember what the, what the medical term was. Um, it's very difficult to differentiate between different forms of anxiety. And of course, what can be described as general anxiety, generalised anxiety disorder in one person might look very different in another, another person. So I tend to just use the word anxiety um, because it will mean what it means to you and it will mean what it means to me. Yeah, so I used to suffer from anxiety a lot and I knew somewhere in the back of my mind that if I stopped drinking, it would be easier to deal with. I would allow myself to deal with it because all, all the alcohol was doing was covering it all over and not allowing me to really look at the weeds and to really identify which plants I wanted to keep, which plants I wanted to nurture and which plants I wanted to trim or get rid of or uproot. Um, and so all the time I was drinking, all I was doing was kind of numbing that anxiety down. So it felt manageable, but it only felt manageable because I couldn't see it. Um, I couldn't experience it fully because it was kind of numbed out. So whilst I was drinking, all those years I was drinking, that anxiety issue was developing roots and it was really securing itself into my very being, my very essence. And while it was doing that, it was making itself much, much harder to remove. And the being wide awake for me when I stopped drinking, it wasn't a, a linear process. It wasn't like I took that cover off the plants in my imaginary garden and suddenly all of these hideous, ugly, well-established weeds that represented anxiety just sprung up. It wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. It was more like there were a few nodules of a few plants kind of just sticking up above the soil. And I couldn't tell at first which were weeds and which weren't. 
I needed to allow them to grow so that I could properly look at them so I could identify which were the weeds and which were the plants I wanted to keep. So for me, when I stopped drinking, it wasn't like anxiety and panic attacks miraculously disappeared or came back with a vengeance. I went through, I would say, a good three months, six months, three to six months. I'm guessing now it was such a long time ago, I can't remember exactly. But I went through a period of months where anxiety didn't really bother me. It wasn't an issue. Um, I wasn't having panic attacks. I was going out for the day. I was traveling. I was meeting people. I was having a great time. I was feeling liberated. I was feeling free. I was on cloud nine because I thought I'd cracked it. But all of the time I was going through those months of feeling liberated, the roots that had been so established were starting to push up um, the plants up above the soil and they were starting to open up and they were starting to thrive. And what happened to me was about three to six months into living my life sober, our anxiety just reared its head. It was like... <laughs> It was like anxiety attacks, panic attacks like I'd never experienced before. And it really was like, well, in stopping drinking, what's happened is the blinkers have been pulled off. The, the cover over all those plants has been ripped off. They are going to come up with a vengeance because all that time I'd been covering up those issues had allowed them to root themselves really deeply. And so it wasn't a case of just stopping drinking and I'll be able to live my life happily without anxiety attacks forevermore. It was more a case of I stopped drinking. My body and mind were kind of going through a rebalancing period um, and settling into a kind of routine and a normality. And then the weeds started coming up. Then anxiety started to hit me. And I can remember, I can remember a day in fact, two different days, similar kind of event, but two different days. One of these days was in my first couple of months living my life sober. And I'd gone to meet with my mum and dad for lunch. I'd driven in the car and I'd gone to meet them for lunch in a in a kind of farm shop that did lovely lunches. And I remember being so overjoyed, so happy and so relaxed and so confident um, and, and just loving the fact that I could meet with my mum and dad without a hangover, without shame, without regret, without fear, without panic, without anxiety, that I was literally skipping like a seven-year-old, um, really enjoying myself, really loving the conversation, and really loving that connection, because it did feel like I was living my life awake, and I was fully engaged in the moment with them. Then, a couple of months later, once that anxiety issue had started to rear its head um, and had started to really hit me in the face. I remember meeting them again for lunch. This time I was meeting them in Cambridge, which is a city not too far away from me. And it's a beautiful city, beautiful buildings, beautiful atmosphere. It's really lovely, great shops. And I remember meeting them there for lunch and about... 30 minutes of the drive, it's about a 40, 45 minute drive for me, about 30 minutes of that drive was panic. It was the panic growing, growing up through my legs, growing through my torso, growing into my chest, into my breathing, into my shoulders, into my face and into my mind. Um, and I can remember sitting in the car, I think I actually recorded a blog about this at the time, um, I think there's a video of me somewhere on the website where I'm actually recording how I'm feeling in that moment. And the, the panic was indescribable. Um, and I went to meet my mum and dad and I had lunch with them. And the whole time I had lunch with them, I was stiff. I was tense. I was putting on a brave face. I was grinning through gritted teeth. Um, I felt like I was going mad. Um, I thought oh, terrible things were going to happen, like I was going to end up being sick in front of them. I was going to end up going mad and falling on the floor. I don't know, just not even 
<laughs> not even kind of a clear idea of something bad that was going to happen, just fear of fear. I was just scared of panic. I was scared of something going wrong. I was scared of, you know, it just not going right. And this was, this was the panic and the anxiety really doing its work. And that's the thing about living life awake is that you are awake to all of the plants in the garden. You're not just awake to the beautiful ones. You're awake to the ones that have been festering, that you've been avoiding. Now, for some people, that can be serious and that can be distressing. For me, I then spent the next year, maybe year and a half, overcoming those anxiety issues. Um, so it wasn't a linear process for me. I was living life awake not just to the joys and the liberations and the lack of shame and the lack of guilt and the healthy, the, the, the increased health and well-being, but I was also wide awake to the distress that anxiety was causing me. And that's the point I want to make is that, well, in fact, there's two. One of them is that, yes, you're living life awake when you stop drinking, and that includes both the good and the bad. And for some people, the bad is going to be minimal. It's, it's going to be maybe a few weeks of not very good sleep. Or it's going to be maybe a few months of eating too much sugar. Um, the, the bad is going to be mild. And for other people, the bad is going to be miserable. It's going to be distressing. It's going to be painful. For me, there was a, a good year, year and a half's worth of times when I felt absolutely like I was buckling under this, this anxiety issue that I had. Um, and it depends, it, you know, it really depends on the individual person and their individual context. But the second point I want to make is that, yes, living your life awake with your eyes wide open and experiencing all of the good and all of the bad can be distressing, it can be challenging, it can be uncomfortable, but the good thing about it is it gives you the opportunity to root out those weeds, to really do that back-breaking work. Um, and it really was back-breaking for me to overcome this anxiety and to learn new techniques and new ways of dealing with it. But if I hadn't stopped drinking, I never would have been able to do that. It never would have been in my face enough for me to have taken that action and for me to have really got to the root of it and to have done something about it. And of course, now it's not an issue at all. But if I'd carried on drinking, it would not only have still been an issue, but the roots would have gone even deeper and it would have been even tougher to have um, rooted them out and to have done something with them. So two points. One is when you're living your life awake because you've stopped drinking, you can expect yourself to be awake to all of the good and all of the bad because that cover uncovers everything. It doesn't just cover the good bits, it uncovers everything. But point number two, it gives you the opportunity to do the trimming back the weeding, the deadheading, the uprooting. It gives you an opportunity to prune your garden and to arrange your garden and nurture your garden, create the garden that you want. And that's really the positive point that I want to end on today is that you need to take that cover off in order to be able to tend the garden. If you leave that cover on, the garden isn't going to be tended. The roots are going to get deeper. And if that cover ever does come off, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be really, really challenging to deal with. So lift that cover off as soon as you can. If you haven't lifted it off already, expect there to be some good as well as some bad. Sorry, I said that the wrong way around. Expect there to be some bad as well as some good. And don't worry if the bad is really painful, really traumatic and really distressing.
because not drinking now gives you the opportunity to deal with that, to address it and to, yeah, and to create your wonderful garden, to create the wonderful life ahead of you in exactly the way that works for you. So let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know if that metaphor works for you. It certainly works for me. I will look forward to catching up with you in tomorrow's Saturday share. I can't get my words out today. Um, I'll look forward to catching up with you in tomorrow's Saturday share. But in the meantime, let's go get sober together. Bye.